Hi, Nick Snook here. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my recent artwork. Uh, for those that don't know me, I have a bachelor's degree in art from Kutztown State College, and I got a master's degree in art, majoring in sculpture from the University of Delaware. I've had my work over 50 years in national shows, regional shows, galleries, one man shows. I haven't done much. I've been involved in other things the past few years, basically archery and some other things. That a couple of years ago, I got back into doing art, and I was doing computerized art, digital. And that got boring, so I went back to my roots, and I started doing pen and inks. Uh, so I'm going to show you some of my pen and inks I've done, and uh, kind of give you an update as to what, how my art's progressed. Uh, so here we go. Take this off of here, and this is one I did about five years ago when I really got back at it. This is a portrait, and my way I get a, my glasses when I can't see the viewfinder. This is a portrait of my wife Betty, uh, pretty much Renaissance style rendering. I. When I was in grad school, my professor required me to copy some Rembrandts. And the only way he'd give me an A in a course is if I, he, he couldn't tell my Rembrandt copies from the originals. I got the A, but it was a lot of hard work. I, I'm not that talented. But anyhow, there's one of my pen and inks where I used to draw. When I got into computers, I noticed, you know, computer printer, we all have prints with dots. And I said, maybe I could do detailed drawing with dots like my computer and actually do color pen and inks. Now, where a computer only has three to four colors in its ink, I have a full palette. So this is my first full color pen and ink drawing. This was based on photo, an old black and white photograph of Marilyn Monroe. And I called it Marilyn and the Bomb. I put a nuclear explosion in the background. But... Here's my new drawing style. We'll go in on this. This is basically hundreds and hundreds, matter of fact, thousands and thousands of dots of different colors. So where the computer has three, I have a range of about 30 colors and I can really control color. And of course, up close, it's just dots. But you get two foot away, this becomes virtually photographic rendering. I'm not trying to copy photographs, but I wanted to go with amount of detail that would maybe keep up with my imagination. So this was a black and white photo. I did the color based on how I wanted the color to work. So that was my first one like that. Okay. After that, I got into trying to get a little more going. And this is a portrait of my wife from a photograph I took in college. This one I call Betty and the Bell X1. Now, it's a little more imagination. My imagination gets away from me sometimes, but the reason I call it that, I grew up in Middletown near the air base. My dad was a pilot, an engineer, and I was interested. This is the Chuck Yeager's Bell X1, first plane to break the sound barrier. Why it's in this picture, I wanted to put it there. I could give you all kind of makeup why I just, I felt I wanted it there. But I was more interested in design, objects, how they relate to each other. And with this new color scheme, I can really, really control shapes and color. So that was my second one of this type. Okay. I did another portrait of my wife. This one was just called Betty, but I was experimenting with 3D. If you use 3D glasses with this one, it, it, it kind of vibrates. But this is another one showing the detail work. Probably over 100,000 dots in this. Again, I'll go in close. But it gives me, what, at least in my opinion, absolute control over my medium. And I'm a control freak when it comes to art. And I said, you get two, three foot away, it's almost photographic. But that's my wife. That's how she looked uh, around the time we first got married, maybe a little bit before. Okay, so that was that one. Uh, after that, I decided to go a little further, and I did one of my Rembrandt forgeries. So I 
This is this Rembrandt in here is actually a self-portrait Rembrandt did of himself, and I copied it. But then I let my imagination go, and I said, "What if Rembrandt was drawn? If James Dean? That's the old uh, 1950s movie. So, what if James Dean was drawing Rembrandt from inside the picture?" So I got this kind of what if going. Again, I'm more concerned about design and imagery than any kind of super intellectual background, but this process gives me fantastic use of detail. And things I just let myself go. There's a little bug hanging from the wall there. It's actually in the drawing. That's just the way my mind works when I start creating. Okay. Now we'll go over to my most recent one. This one's only about two weeks old. Uh, again, aircraft. I use a Warthog, A-10 Warthog as a background. During World War II, a lot of pinups had, well, they painted pictures on planes and pinups. So I took an old-time photograph of a pinup model that was black and white, and I turned it into color. This is from World War I, actually. And I put her in front of the Warthog. Again, I'm looking at along with having the fun with that, the whole thing becomes a design of color to try to draw you into different parts of the image. Okay, uh, this is the one I'm currently working on. Uh, this is a P38. It was a black and white photo I found and I drew it. And this one's only got about three days of work. It's got a good week and a half of work, but I'm starting to fill in a background. It's going to have mountains and sky behind it and other things like that. I will, uh, I draw these one dot at a time. So you can see this is the beginning. This is built up with maybe six or seven layers of color to get that part. I've only got one layer in. So I will put up more pictures of this so you can see the progress to how it finishes. Okay. Uh, now, I've always liked challenges. But, uh, if there's anyone out there who would like to uh, have a custom commission done, maybe a portrait of some family member of yours, I can do portraits without getting into all the weird background. I could, you give me a photograph of a, a grandfather or even a Civil War era ancestor, I can do one of these colored portraits of them and bring them back to life in a way. I enjoy doing these things. It's, it's, for me, it's a creative process. How do I make something like an old time photo look current. Uh, give you a much better feeling of what, like I said, this, uh, this model here has probably been in her grave for 30 or 40 years. And it's kind, you can't bring someone back, but it's kind of neat to see that. So anyone has any old historical photographs they would like Black and white ones, you'd like me to see them done hand on art in color. I draw these. This isn't a, you know, a, a computerized process. And as I said, if you have an interest, you can contact me here on Facebook. Uh, let me know if you like my work. If you hate it, let me know too. Okay, thank you.